In today's video, I'll show you how to groom a straight hair cavoodle, demonstrating on my client, Archie. This is Archie, he's one of my regular clients, and I love grooming him because he doesn't have as much fur as a curly coated cavoodle. As you can see, particularly on his face, he's got really short fur around his muzzle. Unlike curly coated cavoodles that have massive beards that you need to trim. He has a little bit of fur on his head and you'll notice down on his legs, the front legs and the back legs, there's not that much fur on the front of the legs and the inside of the legs. It's just a little bit of fluff down the side and down the back, which I'll trim off. He does get super fluffy paws, a lot of hair between his toes, which I'll trim off as well. And the same thing for the back legs. So he has quite a bit of fur sort of halfway down his legs and then not so much at the front, just a bit at the back and between his paws. Another thing about straight hair cavoodles, which is really great, is because of their coat is so straight, they get less mats. So that means they'll have less tangles and knots for you to get out, which means you will be able to get away with grooming them less often than a curly coated cavoodle. Okay, so I'm going to give Archie a pre-clip. I'll give him a bath, I'll blow dry him, and then we'll come back and I'll show you how to clip his coat. Okay, let's get started. So I like to groom the body first. Today I'll be using my Heinigen clippers with the number four comb attachment. This comb clips at 13 millimeters or half an inch. So I'll just get Archie into position. So using my slicker brush, I'm just gonna brush the fur up against the grain. And I'll start clipping from the base of his neck all the way down to the base of his tail. So I'm just gonna gently glide the clippers along his back like this, and then all the way down his sides. So across his rib cage and across the back of his legs, and I'll just continue going down as far as I can reach. Now with grooming, what you clip once you clip twice to ensure that you haven't missed any long fur and so that your clip is even. So I'll brush the fur up again and I'll re-clip it. You'll notice my left hand is lightly supporting Archie's belly. This is just to prevent him from sitting down while I groom him. And it also keeps him in the one spot on the table and he's not moving around. Today I'll be demonstrating how to groom one side of Archie to save time. So obviously once you've finished clipping this side of your dog's body, you continue to clip the other side before moving on to the next section. Now I'll move on to grooming Archie's back legs. But first I'll finish clipping the bottom of his rib cage that we couldn't quite reach before. So I'll brush up the fur with the slicker brush. And then using my clippers, I'll just angle them in a downwards direction and clip off that fur. To get a better angle, I'm going to lift up his front leg. That way I can get under his armpit and I can clip the fur from his chest, across his belly and into his groin. Great, that's done now. We'll move on to his back leg. Now I'll clip down the side and front of the back leg. You'll see I'm holding Archie lightly on his groin. This is so he doesn't try and sit down. If your dog does try to sit, you can always try using a grooming belly sling to keep them standing. Once you've done clipping, like before, we'll do it again. So. Brush the fur up with the slicker brush and re-clip. While I'm grooming this back leg, it's a really great angle to get in and trim the fur on the inside of his opposite leg. So I'll lift up his back right leg along with his tail so I don't accidentally trim it. And I'll brush up the fur on the inside of his left leg 
and I'll trim it with my clippers. Brushing up the fur again, I'm going to use my straight scissors to blend the longer fur at the top of the leg to the shorter fur at the bottom of the leg. I recommend you use straight scissors with a rounded tip to help prevent you from accidentally nicking your dog. And angle your scissors in a downwards direction so you don't accidentally cut any skin. I'm angling my scissors in an upwards direction so my arm doesn't get in the way of the camera so you can see what I'm doing, but usually I would angle them in a downwards direction. And remember, if you can't see what you're trimming, use your fingers to feel whether it's fur or skin you're about to cut. Be very careful trimming down the back of the legs. There is a lot of loose skin there, as well as tendons, that you don't want to accidentally cut. Next I'll brush up the fur on Archie's hock and trim it with my straight scissors. I'll do this again, but I'll lift up Archie's leg so I can get a better angle. Just be very careful so you don't accidentally cut your dog's paw pads. Archie has had enough and is trying to sit, which can be quite dangerous, so I'm going to use my belly sling, which I'll attach to the top of my grooming table, and that will prevent him from sitting. To keep Archie's tail out of the way so I don't accidentally trim it, I'm going to use a plastic bag clip and clip the fur past his tailbone to one of the straps on the belly sling. Next I'll use my mini trimmers to shave the fur around his large paw pad. I'll link to another video I've made which goes into more details on how to shave your dog's paws. So the last thing we need to do to finish off grooming this back leg is to trim off the fur across the top of the paw and to also cut Archie's nails. So I've brushed up the fur using my slicker brush and now I'm using my curved scissors to trim the fur. I'll do this again so I can trim any fur that I missed the first time. And to triple check I haven't missed any long strands of fur, I'll put my fingers in between Archie's toes and pull out any fur that's in between them and trim the fur that's sticking out. And lastly, we'll just trim Archie's nails. He usually doesn't like me trimming them, so we'll see how we go. And yep, he's not very happy, but I think I can persist. And there we go. I'll give him a little scratch for being brave. If your dog doesn't like you touching their legs or using mini trimmers to shave their paws or trimming their feet or cutting their nails, you could try a belly sling like what I've had Archie in up until now. But if that doesn't help, you can try a grooming hammock like what I have Archie in at the moment. A grooming hammock acts as a second pair of hands, which is great when you don't have anyone else around to help hold your dog while you groom them. For anxious dogs, a grooming hammock can help relax them, while you can quickly groom them without a fuss. If your dog moves around a lot, you can also use a hammock to groom other parts of their body, like their face. They're also great for older dogs that may not be able to stand for a long period of time, or for dogs with disabilities. I've attached this hammock to the top of my grooming table and I've lifted Archie slightly off the table so he can't grip the table to get that traction to pull away from me. Next I'll groom Archie's bum and the top of his back legs. I'll lift up his tail to get it out of the way and I'll brush up his fur and I'll run my clippers around his bum instead of directly down the back of his legs, which is good practice. Because if you aren't using a comb attachment, if you're just using a blade, your dog could unexpectedly kick up their back leg and you could accidentally cut their tendon.
Next, I'll remove the comb attachment. So I just have the 10 blade on my clippers and I'll very lightly run the clippers across the base of Archie's tail and across his bum hole, just to shave any fur there. Now, since I'm on this side of Archie, I'm going to lift up his left back leg this time, holding it with his tail so his tail's out of the way. And just like what we did on the other side, I'm going to brush up the fur on the inner side of his right leg and run over it with my clippers, which has the four attachment comb on them. Once I've trimmed as much fur as I can, I'm going to brush up again and get out my straight scissors and trim off the remaining fur. Again, be very careful with your scissors and make sure you don't accidentally trim any skin. Now I'll groom Archie's front leg. To remove the bulk of the fur, I'll run my clippers down his shoulder and then down the front of his leg, the outer side of his leg and also the back of his leg. I'll lift up his leg to clip the fur at his armpit and down his chest. Now Archie being a straight haired cavoodle, he doesn't get many mats and he doesn't have any knots in his armpit, but I like to shave his armpit using my mini trimmers to prevent any mats from developing. Archie's owner likes me to keep the fur on his legs quite short, so I'll do this by using my straight scissors, cutting in a downwards direction. Just be mindful when trimming the back of your dog's leg to not accidentally cut your dog's pad towards the bottom of their leg. Always feel for it with your fingers before cutting. Once I've finished trimming the back, I'll trim the side and the front. When grooming your dog, you might not want to trim your dog's legs as short as Archie's. You might just want to give them a light trim, which is fine. You can cut as much or as little as you like. Now I'll brush the fur up and trim it again. Next I'll trim his front paw, just like how I trimmed his back one. I'll brush up the fur and trim around the outside of the paw. Now I'll brush up the fur on the front of his paw and trim it with my curved scissors. Making sure I trim the long strands of fur between his nails. I'll brush the fur up again and re-trim. Now I'll lift up his leg and brush up the fur on the inside of his leg and trim it with my straight scissors. Just being very careful not to cut any loose skin in his armpit. Next I'll use my mini trimmers to shave the fur between his paw pads. Next I'll pull up any long strands of fur between his toes and I'll trim them using my curved scissors. I'm 
And lastly, I'll trim Archie's nails. I'll try and be quick because he's not a big fan of me trimming his nails. It does look like he's trying to bite me, but he is just play biting at the moment. And just his dew claw to go. And we're done. Goodbye, Archie. Now I'll trim the fur around Archie's neck. To do this, I'll remove the belly sling since I finished grooming his feet and it's fine for him to sit down while I groom his neck. I'll also remove the slip lead so I can access all of the fur around his neck. I'll then get my slicker brush and brush the fur up around Archie's neck against the grain. And then using my clippers, I'll start from the top of his head and very gently clip down his neck. I'll lift up his ear and clip the fur from the base of his ear leather down his neck. And I'll also scoop out the fur from where his head meets his neck, where his cheek is here. And now to groom the fur directly underneath his muzzle, I'll hold his muzzle very gently with my fingers and I'll lift it up gently to stretch that skin under his neck and then very gently glide my clippers down. So now I've done that once, as usual, I'll do it again. So I'll brush up the fur and clip down again, nice and gently to trim any leftover long strands of fur. Okay, that's done. Next I'll shave Archie's groin area. So to do this, I'll remove the attachment comb from my clippers. So I just have my 10 blade on my clippers. I'm holding Archie just under his leg so he doesn't try and sit. If your dog does try and sit, try using the belly sling again. I'll shave from just in front of his penis towards his bum. And to get a better view, I will lift up his back leg, again holding his tail so I don't accidentally shave it. And I'll continue to shave through his groin area. Including the top of his inner thigh. Once I'm done, I'll also get my mini trimmers to shave any fur I missed with the big clippers. Now I'll link to another video I've made which goes into more detail on how to shave your dog's groin. Next I'll trim Archie's ears. His owner likes me to lay his ears and trim them really short. Now you could leave your dog's ears quite long, just give them a really good brush and make sure there aren't any mats or knots. And then you can simply trim the length of the ears using curved scissors. I'm going to trim Archie's ears the same length as his body, so I'll use the four attachment comb again on my clippers. I'll place his ear on top of my hand, and very gently I'll clip from the top of his head to the tip of his ear. I also like to clip the fur on the inside of his ear, and the fur just below the base of his ear. Next, using my straight scissors, I'm going to trim the fur around Archie's ear leather. You could also use curved scissors to trim around your dog's ears. I'm holding his ear leather with my thumb so I don't accidentally cut it. I'm using my fingers to pull the fur away from the ear leather. And also at the same time, I'm just triple checking what I'm about to cut is fur and is an ear leather. Now I'll just trim the other side of his ear. Now what you do once you do twice, so I'll give Archie's ear another brush. 
and I'll trim around the ear leather again, just trimming off the fur that I missed the first time. Now that I've finished trimming his ear, I'll just brush it one more time and go over it once more with the clippers. And perfect, his ear's done. To save time, I've just finished grooming the other side of Archie off camera, and now I just have his tail left to go. To make sure Archie remains standing and doesn't try and sit while I trim his tail, I'm going to put the belly sling back on him. First I'll brush all of the knots out of his tail. I'm using my slicker brush. I like to hold the dog's tailbone and then brush away from the bone. This way you're protecting the tailbone from accidentally getting scratched by the wire bristles on your slicker brush and it will prevent the fur from pulling, which can be quite painful and irritating to your dog. I'll brush one side, and then I'll brush the other side, ensuring I brush all the way through the different layers of fur. When you think you've brushed all the knots out, comb through the hair and check for any tangles. If the comb gets stuck like this, it means you haven't gotten all the knots out, so just give it another brush with the slicker brush, and check again with the comb. If you come across a knot you can't brush out, I like to use a dematting comb. This one here has 11 serrated blades that easily cuts through knots and mats. Okay, now Archie's tail is ready to be trimmed. I'm going to trim it so it's shaped like a flag. A great trick I learnt when I was training to become a groomer was to twist the end of the fur, just like this. I'm holding onto the end of Archie's tailbone so I don't accidentally cut it. And then I'll just trim off the end using my curved scissors. I'll just give his tail another brush so it's straight. And as you can see, by twisting the fur and trimming it, this has created the start of our curved tail and I'll just use my curved scissors to follow this guideline until I finish cutting to the end of his tail. Now I'll just brush his tail again on both sides. And holding his tail by the tip, I'll just re-trim his tail again, just to make sure I've trimmed it evenly on both sides. Now with this fur down here, I like to trim it short with my straight scissors, just in a straight line with his bum. I like to cut this section short so when Archie goes to the toilet, Pooh doesn't get stuck in this fur. Next I'll trim the fur around the base of his tail using my straight scissors to blend it in with the rest of his body and his tail. This looks good to me, so his tail's all done. That completes Archie's groom. 
Now just spraying with some dog cologne so he smells nice and fresh and he's all ready to go home. I hope you found this video helpful and you picked up a few tips on how to groom your straight haired cavoodle at home. <laughs>